All right, what's going on, guys? Let's see here. We got J and J from Hunting Stuff. We got the Marlboro Man's here and God, Dark Thirty Outdoors. What's going on, brothers? Hope y'all are having a good day. Uh, it's been a long day for me. <laughs> and again, I've been having a lot of long days here lately. Oh, man. So what's going on? You're here for the party, huh? I don't know about what, what party. But let's see here. Got to have my sweet tea, guys. So, I hope everybody had a great weekend. I Hyatt Outdoors, how you doing? I am ready, dude. We're starting ours off uh, this weekend, actually. Um, Going to be headed up North Carolina um, for their early season duck duck season. It's a two-day season. And uh, we're going to be headed up there Thursday night, hunt Friday and Saturday. So, I am Stoked. I can't wait. I am absolutely about to go crazy. I've got to work every day up until then. So in the evenings, I come home and I've been getting all my stuff together, starting to pack up. We're going to camp out for a while. But where the ducks at? I don't know, man. You tell me, Marshall. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I am ready to go, man. I'm ready. Um, like I said, we're going to be camping out uh, Thursday night, Friday night, maybe Saturday night, come home Sunday. I don't know yet. Depends on how good we do. But I am, uh, I am fired up. I mean, fired up. I got... Right now, I got four and a half dozen decoys bagged up. I got another dozen divers that I'm going to get ready. And uh, about a dozen. I already got one dozen divers rigged up. I got to get another dozen. No, Hyatt. Uh, we'll be in North Carolina. North Carolina. No. South Carolina doesn't start until uh, November. November. Yeah, North Carolina starts this Friday. That's exactly right. Two days. I'm going to be there. I am going to Baylor. So, hi, where are you, where are you from, brother? Oh, man, my beard's going all kind of crazy and whatnot. Been out in the wind. I got to work late tomorrow and then uh, maybe doing office work Wednesday and Thursday. If I'm doing office work, that'll give me time to get some stuff packed up. Got my boss ammo all packed up, bagged up, ready to roll. Like I said, I got four and a half dozen puddle duck decoys ready, already bagged up. You're from Lumberton. Okay, cool beans. I'll be uh I'll be hunting your way during the during the season. They're right on the border of South Carolina. I know exactly where it's at, buddy. I'll be hunting your way. Um probably I was I was your way while I was on the coast, but you know, uh out of uh where the heck was I? <laughs> <laughs> Wilmington. <laughs> there we go. I was in Wilmington during the teal season. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm a, I'll be hunting your way. Um, as a matter of fact, when the second, when the coastal, when the coastal um, season comes in for y'all, I'll be, uh, I'll be that way. I'll be, that's where I'll be staying. Well, east of Lumberton, of course, but.
Yeah, dude, just do me a favor. Um, go to my about page, man. Shoot me an email. Tim, you know, give me your name and stuff and a phone number, and I'll, man, I'll give you a call. I'll give you a call, but I will be going out there. We got a buddy of mine that lives lives about forty five minutes e uh, west of Wilmington. Hey Charles, what's going on, buddy? Welcome back. I got to get with you too, Charles. I got to get with you this year. I wanted to hunt North Carolina last year, but some things didn't work work out the way I wanted it to. Ohio opens the 22nd. Cool beans. Y'all ought to be seeing some ducks, man. I'm, it is getting, there's a big Arctic front coming down. I know that, uh, Kyle, I know that uh, Cody was telling me the other day that uh, he, they, were, they had snow on the ground. They had snow all over, yeah, they had snow on the ground where he was at. But I wanted to uh, hit North Carolina last year. Um, <clears throat> the first split in November. Not, what part of Marshall? What tell me what part of Georgia are you in? Um, but water's really low. Yeah, I wanted to go. Like I said, I wanted to go last year, but some things didn't work out, and. Um, uh, mostly it was financials, but, um, so I didn't get to go. So this year, um, I decided to put in for a swan permit. I was going to go to North Carolina. Uh, I got a year license. So I'm going to be hunting a lot in North Carolina. A lot, a lot. Um, Yeah, I'm the same way, Charles. I'm the same way, especially here. I don't uh I may not kill a lot, but we're gonna eat good. Um I gotta get I gotta better I gotta pack up some cooking stuff too. Like I said, we're gonna be camping out. So but I, I am man, I'm I'm planning on getting up there a lot this year. Um I I got a lot of good friends, uh Hyatt that live right there out of Florence and Darlington. You should be aware of that area. And they go, they go up the lumber river, hunt lumber river, uh, um, hunt up there on the PD a lot. So are we going to be heading that way? Have a gun. We'll travel. I'm, I'm traveling this year. <laughs> I am. <clears throat> but I may be going to Georgia. It all depends. Yo, Clyde, what's going on, man? Long time no see, man. Glad you could come in. How you been? Yeah, I've been kind of, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the guys that are in here that are content creators, I have been slacking. On watching videos, I have been so dang busy at work. Um, I haven't been able to turn around and spit. That's how busy I've been. Um, and I, I try. I start up. I start a video, and then something comes up, and I got to stop it. Not much, man. Uh, Southeast Georgia, Saddle. Satilia River. I'm not sure I know that area. Is that um I don't think I've ever been down that way. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've driven through driven if it's off of 95, I've probably driven across it. I just don't ever remember the the name. But uh, I, I have, man. I, I've just been working so much and, and, and hard. I come home and um, I don't even look at a computer, man. My eyes are hurting and I just I just eat and fall asleep. But my time is coming. Duck season is almost upon us. 
I haven't done any videos. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's how busy I've been. I hadn't even had time to do a video. So I've been doing these live streams, you know, just to, just to welcome people in and get people to come see it and chat it up and talk and just have a good time. Uh, about ready to, uh, I want to go to Georgia. I do want to go to Georgia. Got a couple, got a couple people up there. I'd like to go see. And, um, well, I had a good, I think at least I thought it was a good dove hunt. Um, in September, a couple of good dove hunts in September, uh, went to North Carolina to hunt teal. That didn't work out. So we went to go hunt some geese and that didn't work out. And we ended up getting on a dove shoot while, while we were waiting on the geese. And I ended up shooting a limit of doves. <laughs> um, and we never did see any geese. So, eh. Is what it is. You take the opportunity that you know that you get, right? I don't know if I'll bite the head off a duck, but if uh, one's still alive, I may crush the skull with my teeth. I've done that in the past. Everybody seems to like that one, man. I, I tell you what, I put that thing on TikTok and I got like 38,000 views on it. It was crazy. Uh, it was nuts. You're about an hour east of Brunswick. Well, I've been to Brunswick numerous times. That was hilarious. Every the YouTube version, it I don't know what happened when I put it on Instagram and when I put it on TikTok, it didn't video all of it. But when when I when I did bite the head off that dove and I spit it out, I mean feathers came out with it. So that's what everybody was laughing about. East, west, well, you're west, okay. Uh, I do use a video editor. Um, it's called Wondershare Filmora. Uh, I have been using that editor long before uh, I started YouTubing. Uh, I used it for work because I have, on occasions, I have to do videos for work. And there are times when I need to, to edit sound or what have you. And... Uh, I like it. Um, it does everything I want to with it. Um, I think it, you know, so that's what I use. Um, but if I were you, if you're going to, if you're going to use a GoPro, um, I'm assuming you're going to use a head mount. Is that what you're going to use? If I were you, let's see if I can find one. I got them all plugged up over here, charging. This is a battery charger. It's got two USB ports and a, a phone jack, uh, or actually a charging charging jack here, with two USB port, ports. And what I do, if I'm uh, if I'm putting my camera, my GoPro on top and then using the clamp to clamp it to something. I have these uh, M4 bags. If you know what an M4 is and the magazines that go with it or an AR-15 mag holder. And I'll take this and put it, put them in, put them in the, uh, the holder and then run the wire to it. And I don't use a battery. Um, I don't keep a battery in my, in my GoPro, I just plug it straight to this and it will last a whole lot longer than those little bitty batteries that you get, that you get. <clears throat> a 
Let's see if I can get this thing plugged back in. There we go. Yeah, if I have it on my head. Um, so here's the <coughs> here's the head strap. <coughs> I just attached one of them to the back. To the back of the head strap. I run the wire around my head and um I run it that way. I usually I usually mount two or three station, two or three GoPro stationary. I wear one on my head. And then of course I have several, um, bigger cameras that I use, um, for other stuff, you know, other stuff while I'm out there, kind of like vlogging it. Yeah. If, if you, if you have the GoPro three plus, I think it's what it's called. Uh, you have to run a battery in it. But if you got a seven or better, you do not have to have a battery in it and inside of it. I just plug it straight up and it gets everything. No, we haven't been getting any rain whatsoever. Uh, we get a drizzle here and there. Ever since the hurricane came through, uh, we haven't. I mean, we may get a, a drizzle. Literally, it just spits and then stops. And we need more water too. We're losing. Yeah, we're 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 low. <clears throat> But I like this setup, Kyle. Um, you know, because it, it changing out those batteries. I mean, you'll be sitting there, and ducks are working, or you're catching a fish, or whatever, whatever it is, and your dad gum battery dies on you. You hear it, beep 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 beep, and that's it's done. Then you then you're having to mess with that. At least with this, I mean, it'll last all day. Get a, I got several uh 100 what 128 gig memory cards so i just let it i just let it run it'll run it'll run a good a good day yeah yeah i don't know i don't know if well, i guess it would all depend on your action camera but like the little no, I, don't, I can't reach it, but the little three plus that I've got, it will not work unless you have a battery in it. Uh, I'm hearing the same thing, Charles. Yeah. I, I, yeah, they're nice. They had a nice price to them nowadays. I just went in there to go buy a new one. I got a a new camera the other day. I got a, a GoPro eight and uh, bought it and walked out the store and forgot that I needed a, uh, an external battery for it. And I needed a um, SD card. So I had to run back and, and get that. But I try to put, I, like I said, I've got three GoPros, two action cameras, and I try to put them all out. And then, of course, I've got my, my vlogging cameras and, and whatnot that I use. <sighs> Hendricks Family Farm, how you doing? Welcome in. Yeah, I, I, I've heard the same thing, Charles. Um, there's a couple places here that have impoundments, and they're having a hard time pumping. I mean, they have to, actually, they're they're turning on their pumps. Um, 
instead of pumping out of the lake or a creek or whatever, they're they're having to actually turn pumps on. The ones that got them, the one that drilled. I appreciate that. Yeah, if y'all do me a favor and hit that like button, it sure would be appreciative. All right. So what else we got? It's got a handful of guys here ready for duck season. Are y'all ready? Or are y'all trying to get ready? Or let me know what you're doing. <clears throat> but today I um I still got I still got a little bit of packing to do uh, for the weekend. I and basically it's not really packing; it's just putting it all in one spot. So when I do get ready to leave Thursday evening, um, I can everything goes in the boat just right. <clears throat> got to get my propane tanks and extra stuff and. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I think on our flyway, we're going to have an average year. Um, I don't think it's going to be that spectacular unless we get these Arctic blasts that I've been, and I've kind of been hearing about them here lately. They're talking about some serious cold weather coming in. And if that happens, I think we'll see more ducks. But unfortunately, Hot, you and myself, being from South Carolina and Georgia, we are fast becoming fly. I know South Carolina is already there. So I don't know about Georgia, but we're becoming fly flyover states. And we're just, we're just going to, you know, it's just going to be. You know, if you're not there when they happen to hit, that's that's the problem. Uh, black ducks. Nope. Um, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I have not shot a big duck in over three years. That's how bad it's been in South Carolina. That's why I'm leaving um, and going up to North Carolina a lot. Um, I'm going to, because it's just, it. the duck hunting here is has gone down so bad. And I'm not saying we don't have ducks, but we don't have them on the public areas like we used to. And there are a lot of them in the impoundments. And everybody and their brother gangs up around those impoundments if they can. And it's just it just gets it, it just gets aggravating. Grant McIntosh, what's going on, man? Welcome in. Appreciate you coming. But um, Marshall, I'll tell you, last year, it was the last day of the season when I finally saw Mallards. And they were so call and hole shy, they would, they, they, there was nothing we could do to get them in. Um, I mean, that's just uh, uh, you know, you can't get them in. You can't get them in. I mean, we we've been shooting wood ducks. That's it, um, and that's one of the reasons I I really I said you know if, if I'm going to shoot if I'm going to shoot anything other than a wood duck I got to leave I got to leave and go somewhere where there's where there's more ducks than what we got. Two black ducks in a lifetime. I I can't say I man we used to have I mean. When I was growing up, we we had a lot of ducks, a lot of mallards, a lot of black ducks, pintails. We had them all. We had them all. I've shot quite a few. Um, and that's why, again, that's why I'm going back to North Carolina, going going up there to hunt more and more, not just in the inland areas, but in the in the on the coast because I want black ducks. You know, I want pintails. I want widgeon. I want mallards. You know. Um, and we're just not seeing them here. 
Not saying that people don't shoot them here. Not saying that at all because they do get shot. But um, I gotta I gotta get away from where I've been and 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 go other somewhere else. <laughs> They're just plain evil. <laughs> well, Charles, I've always said it ain't but two evil creatures in the world. You know, that's women and ducks, because it's the only thing that'll get a man out of bed at 2 30 in the morning to go chase it. So there you go. You just prove my point. His last year was the first time I had a hunt where we only shot mountains. Man, you did better than I did. I, I, it's just terrible here. It was just terrible. Um, <laughs> you like that, huh, Grant? So I'm, I'm, you know, I just got to get up and leave, man. Got to get up and go. But I am ready. I am ready. Actually, just getting a little too excited. I'm scared I'm going to jinx myself. Oh, man. So what else, everybody? Come on, talk to me. Tell me what you got going on. <clears throat> but I've been hearing um, the Atlantic Flyway, uh, they say that the, the Atlantic Flyway Mallard count was up, which... I don't not exactly sure if I can believe that or not, but um, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Uh, let's see, record lows next three nights here, crazy weather. Yeah, um, it was 80 degrees here today, and I think Thursday night uh, it's going to get into the 30s for the lows. Hey, Tina, what's going on? Glad you could make it. Appreciate it. Tina, if you're willing and able, uh, any, any of the guys that are in here that have channels, feel free to um, post up their links. So any of those other guys that are in here um, – that are in here that uh, don't have their channels, they can have a chance to look at them. Oh, okay. Let's see here. I hear a lot of old timers say that duck dynasty killed duck hunting. What is your opinion on that? I will say in the last five years, I've seen a lot more shooting Light spots, pirates, and <laughs> that is boat. Um, off the hook, how you doing? Yeah. All right, so I have, um, I'm going to show you something. And as I talk about it, did Duck Dynasty kill duck hunting? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I would hate to, I would hate to think <clears throat> that, that they did. Um, and if they did, uh, I can assure you that it was not intentional. Um, it's a, it's an entertainment show. Uh, Phil Robinson, you know, started off making duck calls and then he decided he wanted to do a video. And he came out with a very successful line of videos that no one else had. Um, they were the Duck Commander, the the middle, uh, Duck Men of Louisiana. Um, 
videos, which I've got just about every one of them, if not every one of them. Um, I've actually hunted with the man. Uh, really good guy. Uh, he is um, something special. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed his company the, the, in the, the time that I got to hunt with him. Um, I think that um, a lot of uh, a lot of things um, contributed to the fad that's going on now as far as duck hunters. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, it's not just Duck Dynasty. It was a lot of things. Um, mud motors. I have a mud motor, um, but mud motors. Um, you know, I hate to say, I hate to, to name drop, but, you know, there are companies out there that, that, um, that say, you know, if you're not shooting aluminum ducks and wearing our camo, you're not cool. And, you know, you, the, today's youth and, and what's going on, it's, it's, they, they're going to get all that. And they, yeah, they're in daddy's boat. Um, you know, but I got to remember one time I was in my daddy's boat. At one time I was driving my daddy's truck and I was in his boat. And, you know, we, we hunted and, but I was taught a little bit different. I was taught the right way. And you're right, Charles. I was going to get to that here in a, in a second. You also got to remember 60 day, 60 day season, six bird limit. Um, it's, um, uh, uh, you got more days to hunt. Um, I personally like, uh, yeah, what if I quit migrating before duck dynasty and I'll get, I can get into that too, Grant, but, um, I like what North Carolina does. I'll just be quite honest with you. They have for waterfowl for when I'm just strictly talking waterfowl. I don't know about anything else, but I do know about waterfowl. And they have uh, no Sunday hunting on um, during the waterfowl season, which means they can break their 60 days up and expand it and have two days in, or actually it's four days in October, but two days during this period, two days in this period, you know, a little bit earlier in November, close it down and then open back up in December and then run it to January. I'll run it to the end of January, but there's no Sunday hunting. And so there it's, it's expanded a little bit. I kind of like that idea to be quite honest. Um, I'll get to, to learn more about it as the season progresses. Um, but duck hunting in general, since the eighties, uh, we've been seeing a decrease in migrations. Uh, I did a whole big video on that a, a long time ago called Has the Migration Changed? You go back and look at it. It's a lengthy video. Go back and look at it if you want. Um, it's called The Migration. Has, has the Migration Changed? Um, a lot of this is corn ponds, private, private corn ponds. <coughs> and you know, I, I'm not I'm not knocking anybody down who has private land, and they they can do what they want to. It's private, and they can do whatever they want to do with it. And by law, they can plant corn um, and flood it. Um, my personal opinion, I think it's legalized baiting. But you know, with that said, if that's what they want to do, then they can. Um, yeah, then you got heated ponds, okay, but. The migration has been changing, um, you know, and what I have seen personally have seen since the 80s. And, I, you know, I had old, even older old timers older than me who said that it was changing way before then. So. Um, and you've got you got you got more land that's opened up private land that they are that they are. uh 
manipulating and they are managing for waterfowl. They're manipulating the ground. They're manipulating the soil. Um, and they're managing ducks, which there's nothing wrong with that. Not one bit. If I had my own property, I'd do the same daggum thing. But, you know, they're managing for waterfowl. They're keeping areas open. Um, and the ducks don't need to move. Always remember this. Ducks need three things. I have said this a thousand times. I'll say it, I'll say it another thousand. Ducks need three things. They need food, they need water, and they need rest. And if you can give them those three things, you're going to keep ducks, period. Weather does affect the migration. You got to also remember ducks are, are photo period birds. They're going to migrate on the moon phases regardless. But if they get to a spot that's got open water, it's got food, and they're not shot every day, harassed every day by boats, four-wheelers, trucks, what have you, they're going to stick around. A duck can take a lot of weather, a lot of weather, especially old mallard duck. He can take a lot of cold weather. You've seen it before. I know you've seen videos where you'll see ducks landing on top of ice to get to the corn. Yes. You know, they, a duck, you know, flying 100 miles, 200 miles is nothing. They'll get up, they'll fly 100, 200 miles south, get below the freeze line to open water, rest up. Heck, they'll fly back the next day to go get that corn. I mean, they'll do it. It's it's proven. They'll it'll, they'll do it. But with uh, but with these uh, managed properties, um. If they would, you know, these managed properties, these open water places, they keep water open all year long, whether they put in ice eaters or, or whatever, um, as long as they've got, as long as they got water, they're, they're, they're going to stick around. They're going to stay, it's just flat out going to stick around, you know, but go look at the video um, when you get a chance. But anyway, I was telling you I hunted with Phil Robinson. This is taken in the 80s, and you can see him in the back there in his blind. Photograph I took. The person in the foreground is my dad, and I'm the one taking the picture. That's the that's the big blind that he hunts out of a lot on his property. So, but that's an old, old picture. Let's get it closer. There you go. You can see it's him. Uh but, you know, I got a tub of other, I got a bunch of pictures. I took, I, 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 I bet I went through 10 rolls of 35 millimeter film <laughs> when I went to hunt with him. Uh, you know, I got the, I, I got the, exactly, Grant, exactly. They're gotten lazy and I call them welfare ducks. You know, they're being fed corn. You know, the farther, the farther south that a duck gets, he doesn't need corn. What he needs is invertebrates and he needs invertebrates. So when they start to chase each other at the end of January and finally catch up with each other in early spring and they start to mate those hens and those drakes, they need that protein. And the hens really need that protein for those invertebrates so they can have a good nesting season. Um, that is what they need when they get down here. But we've got, we have, we have, as Grant said, they're lazy. They've gotten lazy. They're welfare ducks. And, you know, they're eating off, they're eating welfare. I mean, I don't know, I don't know any other way to say it. Um, 
Yeah, Jerry, that's that's one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I mean, we have a lot of resident ducks here, but they'll stay on those ponds, and people will walk out. They think, oh, I got ducks on the pond. How cute is this? They'll go buy a bag of scratch corn, pour it out for them, throw them bread. Little kids go out there and feed them bread. That's what's wrong with our goose season here. Uh, we have a resident, we have a resident, a huge resident population of geese, but they fly from pond to pond. You know, he is Hyde. He's a really good man. He really is. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. And, and the rest of them are, are the same way. That's why I said, I don't think Duck Dynasty killed it. I think, um, did it have some, I think all social media, I think all media, if you're a duck hunter and you have a YouTube channel or, or, or Twitter or TikTok or Instagram, or you have a TV show, you know, you can claim that we've all killed duck hunting. Um, because we're trying to make it popular. We're trying to get people to watch our stuff. Um, and I, and I understand that the same thing could be said with fishermen, you know, with all these bass fishing shows and all these tournament fishing uh, for walleye and pike and bass and crappy, you know, is it killing the, is it killing the sport? The gun store still doesn't sell any of the call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, wait a most people won't send hunting for ducks on there either from out of state and moved here or central western Ukraine. I want to hunt the coast. Yep, I kind of like the idea myself, but I do understand those that don't because sometimes Sunday is the only time I get to hunt. Uh, I may be busy Monday through Saturday working. And if Sunday's the only day I got, and now I can't do it because, you know, it's it's closed. It's Sunday closed. So I I got it. I mean, I trust me. I understand it 100. Um, I just look at it, I guess, from a different set of eyeballs and and go, well, that's one day that the ducks won't be harassed. You know, that's one day that they'll have rest. You know, um. You know, does it have to be Sunday? I don't know. Could it be another day of the week? You know, could it be Monday through Thursday? You know, or Monday, you know, you have a one day, Monday on that seven day period, just pick a day. Does it have to be Sunday? You know, I just think that one day uh, a week um, would be sufficient just to lower the, the, the the pressure on those birds i mean they're gonna get hard on saturday i mean those ducks are gonna get hard on saturday um uh, monday through it, and it does yeah and it, and it would grant because those ducks have rested up on on sunday and monday morning would be one of the best days to hunt I, yeah Yeah, and, and again, you look at the weather as well. I mean, if you're going to have a good weather pattern that comes in over the weekend, that may be, you know, that Monday. But, you know, what what day do you pick? You know, um, I think Sunday was picked originally just because of the Bible Belt. Um, okay, got it. I understand that. But uh, could any other day work? You know, could any other day of that week work? Always best day of the week. Yeah. My main spot is closed Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday is always the best day of the week. Your spot is closed Sunday. Monday and Tuesday is always the best. Okay, I got you now. My main spot is closed on Sunday. Monday and Tuesday is always the best day of the week. Yeah. Got you. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you give, a, you give them rest. I mean... Right now, um, in my state, there's somewhere you can hunt ducks seven days a week. You know, <laughs> uh, closed on Sunday and Monday. Okay. 
I prefer not to hunt on Sunday and spread the season structure out like we have it. I do too. Um, because I do believe we do have an early migration in October and I've seen ducks in October. Um, and you don't need to have a week worth. You can have like North Carolina does two days this week and then two days the next week. Um, and spread it out and throughout November, December, and January. I, I think that's a great idea. I just think it's a great idea. You just spreading everything out, you know. Yeah, I'm at church on Sunday, so that makes sense. I don't know how many times I've gone to church with blood in my feathers in my beard and blood on my <laughs> my hands and my face painted black. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, that happens on occasion. Um, but yeah, I, um, I just think one day, uh, and you're spreading the season out a little bit. <laughs> we need to just make sure we discuss it with the ducks. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. They're getting their calendars ready. I know it. All righty. Well, if y'all haven't already, do me a favor and hit that like button. I sure would appreciate it. Use all the help I can get. But um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, um, in the beginning, some of you may have caught it, may not. I'll be leaving Thursday to head north for a couple of days. Try to kill a duck. I'm going to chase them, that's for sure. And then um, come back, work. And uh, if I'm lucky, um, I'm going to go the second weekend that they're open. I'll probably only hunt that Saturday. I don't think I'll be able to hunt Friday, but I'll be definitely be able to hunt Saturday if things work out right. And then back, back again up in November – back again in December, back again in January, you know. <sighs> NT Outdoors, how you doing? Welcome in. But my goal now is to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get a new dog, y'all. I'll be I, uh, for those who don't know, I lost mine in July, and um, she passed away at a ripe old age, uh, 14 years, and so I am dogless uh, right now. So I'm gonna be looking for a new pup. Speaking of water and birds, they've been marsh hen hunting. They're delicious. You know I've been marsh hen hunting. How you doing, Ty? Long time no see, buddy. How's it looking on your end, brother? You getting the retune crop coming in and should be getting flooded here shortly. Um, I am not. I, you know what? I'm not sure. Um, my wife and I have discussed this at length and I am really considering about getting a, and I mean, I'm, I'm really considering this guys about getting a standard hunting poodle. Um, I'm really, really looking into it. Um, uh, I have nothing against, I love my labs. I've always owned a lab. I've never owned a Boykin. Uh, they're great little dogs. Um, but we are, yep, a poodle, a standard hunting poodle. That's right. And uh, return crop good. All the ducks will be on the refuge. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, 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 that figures. 
Um, Ty, I did not get my swan permit. I put in for it. I did not get drawn this year. So, but I will be going up to North Carolina a lot to hunt. So, hey, Greenhead, how you doing, buddy? Welcome in. Yep, I'm really considered about getting a poodle. Um, I it has to be from a hunting line. The uh, mom and dad have to have hunt master, you know, lineage. Um, and I want, um, I call them red, but I, I think if you looked at them, they're more brown. Oh, dude, I'm going to be hunting, um, this, this Friday. I'll be duck hunting this Friday. So I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting worked up about, about that. By the way, a French Brittany is a hardy little dog and very birdie. Yes, yes, I know that. Uh, I think she's wanting a poodle because they're hyperallergenic and don't shed as much as all the other dogs do. And we have, like I said, we have discussed this at length. Uh, she loves labs. I love labs. Uh, I think a Boykin would be a perfect fit for the kind of hunting that I do. Uh, a French Brittany would be a great little dog. Um, I do not want a designer dog like a Labradoodle or a Golden Doodle or whatever other doodle it is. Um, if I'm going to get if I'm going to get something like that, I'm going to get um, a poodle, and it will have to be a, a like I said, a standard hunting poodle. Um, I have watched way too many videos. I have talked to a lot of people who have them and they're absolutely fantastic water dogs. Now, the, the drawback with the poodle is they cannot, they cannot take the cold like a lab or even a, 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 a golden or, you know, and nothing can take the cold like a Chesapeake. I mean, they they just, I mean, they'll go lay, lay in a bucket of ice. I mean, that's just how they are. But, um, so you got to be careful with them when it gets, when it gets really cold weather. Um, and you, you combat that with uh, letting the hair grow out a little bit length, longer. It's called a hunting cut, a hunting cut. Um, it's not foo fooed out or anything, but it's, and it's curled up, it's curly and you let it grow out a little bit thicker during the, during the winter months and you get them a vest and, um, and then you get them, you know, maybe bring a, a blanket or something with you, uh, to dry them off when, when they get too wet, when it's, when it's super, super cold. Um, Jesse's are nuts. Yes, they are. Well, that old saying it was a long time ago to you got a kid you talk about dogs and, uh, he said, um, he said, uh, a golden retriever, if a game warden visits your, if a game warden visits your blind and you have a golden retriever, he will, that golden retriever will lick that game warden's face. If you, if he visits the blind and you have a Chesapeake, he will more likely bite the face off of that game warden. If it's game warden visits your blind, and you have a Labrador that Labrador is going to show that game warden where you hid the extra ducks at. Um, it's just, that's just the, the, you know, the, if you've ever owned one, one of these dogs, you ever had one of these dogs, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really considering it, dude. And, uh, I'm right now I'm trying to put the money together. Uh, because they're going to be, it's going to call, it's going to be a pretty expensive dog. So, used to hunt with one that that sucker would not use a dog door right out of the <laughs> Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, Chessies are nuts.
But I tell you what, if I do get a poodle, um, there'll be very few of them in the swamp. And I guarantee you, I let that dog out. There's people going to be talking about me. <laughs> Recommended Atlantic Flyway call makers. Oh my gosh. Uh, you're from, uh, wow. Um, okay. All right. Um, uh, hang tight. Hang tight a minute. Man, I've just been packing things up to get ready for this hunt. Let me. Give me a second. You would have to ask that question as after I've packed all my calls and stuff up to get ready for this trip. Um, you will be the talk of the Mars. Uh, they are expensive, but definitely worth it. Okay. So uh, let me put that up. All right, you can see the hat I'm wearing, Tecton Game Calls. Um, I did a video on this guy. Um, this is his cut-down version. I have his cut-down call. Very, very good-sounding call. Um, it's not on my lanyard right now because I have some others that I'm going to be checking out um, this year uh, that I just prefer right now. Um the other one, let's see here. All right. Uh, that's made by Tecton. Um, the other one, uh, this is called, from the Waterfowl Company. This is a J frame. He does make cut downs. He makes wood duck calls, makes a lot of good, a lot of good mallard calls. This is Daryl Newman um, from. Uh, the Waterfowl Company. Um, again, this is uh, Tecton. This, this one right here is from the Waterfowl Company. And this little jewel is from um, Big Lake Outdoors. It's another J-Frame style call. Uh, he makes them single read. They all make them single read, double reads, whatever you want. Tecton, he does make J-Frames. I just don't have one of his. I just got the, the cut down. Um, uh, as far as call makers, um, they're going to be in my top three it, the re and I've got their calls. And, um, again, I, I have done video. The only one I have not done a video on is, uh, Daryl Newman's waterfowl company. <clears throat> and that the only reason I have not done that is because I have not been able to catch up with him to, to sit down and do one. Another one um, here in South Carolina uh, is West Looney, but that gum, I can't remember the name of his company. Um, oh, I wish Wes was in here tonight. I, I could, let me see if I can. Um, uh, Let's see. Hang on. Give me a second. Let me just send him a text message real quick. Um, hopefully he'll uh, respond to me shortly. Wes Looney, uh, up and coming call maker here in South Carolina. He is doing real well. He's got some great sounding calls. He's got a pretty good wood duck call, by the way. I kind of like it a lot. I don't have one of his calls yet, yet. And uh, I have not done a, 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 a video on that. 
um, ground SWAT game calls. Ground SWAT game calls. Uh, 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 there are several others. Uh, we need to plan a March hen hunt. The lemon is like 15 to 25. Okay, buddy. Um, I'm, yep, let's go. Give me a call. We tried him, Grant, but, uh, we had a bad year. Uh, there were still, there were still ducks. Um, there were still blue winged teal in Canada. Um, sorry about that. Uh, we, I mean, we would see 15, 20 here and then we'd go hunting the next day and they'd be gone. Um, the whole month of September, I was getting reports that there were still blue wings in Canada, uh, up until the beginning of this month. Um, it was, uh, there were still, still blue wings in Canada. Well, when is your teal season in South Carolina? It's September. Uh, I do too, Marshall. Um, hang on, hang on one second. Uh, uh, those blue wings sent to sent in. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're there anymore either. Joy, Joy from Joy was his name from Tecton. Uh. Yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, I like Joy a lot. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Ty. I could not remember Joy's name to save my life. Um, yeah, all of these calls that I have uh, that are from them, uh, they're great sounding calls. I like each and every one of them. Um, I do think that there is a time and place. That's why I have so many calls, because there are times and places where one call will work more than the other. Um. And so, you know, that's why I carry a lot of calls. And I love a cut down call. Um, I absolutely love them. Um, the two cut downs that I have on my lanyard are both my by Kirk McCulloch. Uh, I'm going to be running these two calls for a little while. And then maybe later on in the year, I may switch over to Joey's uh, from Tecton. Uh, but his call sounds just as good. If You know, I'm just saying it sounds just as good. And I like them. Um, I just don't have any more room to put them on. But uh, if you go and you look at those, so be Tecton. Uh, I did a video on him. Um, the Waterfowl Company. Um, I did not yet. Uh, Big Lake Outdoors. Uh, Hugh McLaren. Um. Wes Looney from uh, Ground SWAT Game Calls. If you go and look at there and you want to get one, just do me a huge favor and mention my name that you heard it from here, um, that I sent you over there to, to take a look at their calls. Um, I don't get nothing out of it. No one, None of them are sponsoring me. Um, and they're all just happen to be just good friends of mine. And I want them to know that they're – that I'm trying to help them out as much as they've helped me on certain things in the past. So. <clears throat> yeah. Joey Dumet owns tech tecton. That's right. Yeah. If you talk to them, let them know that I sent you. Did you heard about it from me? Um, is he still, I think he's still in Canada, isn't he? He's in Canada still shooting ducks. I don't know if they've come back yet or not. Now, he may be up there all year. I don't know. Uh, 
And uh, I would do a sound file for y'all, but if I do, my wife is going to come through that side door right there and beat me about the head and neck and face with a cast iron skillet. So that ain't happening. Or is may probably run the teals out. Yeah. Um, I know they've gotten some cold weather, but I mean, they've, they were holding teal in in, in the first part of October, uh, first couple of days, uh, from what I understand. So it, it, if they left, they 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 they're here or they've gone on to greener pastures down in Venezuela or Argentina somewhere. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Hey guys, I am live, man. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> uh, what's everybody's dream hunt? Hey, I I I mispronounce it all the time, Ty. Don't worry about it. What is my dream hunt? What's everyone's dream hunt? My dream hunt. Oh, I have so many, dude. I have so many hunts that I places I want to. I haven't been that I want to go to. Um, I definitely want to go back to Alberta. Um, the last time I was there was absolutely great. Um, I would love to go to uh, New Brunswick or Nova Scotia or Prince Edward Island, uh, to go and shoot, um, black ducks. I would love to do that. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I just have a lot of, a lot of places. Um, I've, I've hunted in Arkansas, been the green timber in Arkansas, I've gone snow goose hunting, speckle belly hunting, you know, which is all great. Um, I would guess maybe going to Alaska to shoot a Harlequin. Um, I would, as far as puddle ducks go, um, and if you want to classify these two ducks as puddle ducks, but the whistlers, the, the black belly, uh, whistling duck or the furless tree duck, uh, that and a, those two birds and a cinnamon teal are the only three puddle ducks I've never shot. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to shoot one. So if I could go and shoot those, those would be dream hunts. Even if it was just one, um, that would be a, a, a dream hunt. Um, you know, that, that, that would, I would just love to get those three ducks to be quite honest. Um, I've done dry, dry field hunts. I've done timber hunts. I've done flooded field hunts. Um, <laughs> I've, um, so, you know, I, I've, 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 I've done a lot. I just, but I do, yeah, I'd like to go to the, up in the Northeast, uh, shoot black ducks. I would like to go out. I'd like to go head down to Florida to be able to shoot my tree ducks. I would like to go to out west to get a cinnamon, and uh, like I said, I'd be I'd be extremely happy with one bird each. You know, just one bird each to. You know, um, I've never been swan hunting. Um, I've never been swan hunting. I put in for a swan tag for the first time this year. I did not get it. Um, maybe next year. Um, that would be a dream hunt. Um, yeah, the conditions are, are good timber. Yeah, you're right. Timber hunts are hard to beat, man. RD Reynolds. What's up, buddy? Yeah. You're getting ready to go, man. Um, I, I Hey, my offer still holds, dude. If you get a good hunt, let me know. and I'll go up there with you and just turn the camera on. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd love that, that's a, a harlequin duck would be a, a beautiful duck to have. Um, as far as divers go, um, I don't know. Do y'all consider a harlequin a diver, or do you consider it a sea duck? I've never been sea duck hunting. As far as the scotiers and the eiders and stuff, that would be cool. I'd like to go on that, that, that kind of hunt. Um, uh, I've pretty much shot the divers, the redheads, both blue, both greater and lesser bluebills. Shot canvasbacks. Um, uh, shot an old squall. Um, let's see here. I've shot buffalo heads. Uh, I've never shot a golden eye. I've never shot a golden eye. Um, like to shoot a golden eye. Oh, uh, what is it? the golden eye? And you got the barrows and you got all kind of common. I've never shot any of those. Um, I've shot a ruddy duck. Um, got an abundant supply of swans around here, but the man won't allow it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. So, I mean, I've got, I've got quite a few ducks that I could, I'd like to tack on the wall, but, um, I would love, I'd love to get those three, those last three puddle ducks. Yeah, Grant, somebody did that around here too. They shot five of them. They shot five of them. Um, and uh, the man got him. Man got him at the boat ramps. <laughs> yeah, I've never been sea duck hunting. I've never. I've never done it. Um, I'm hoping that this year I might be able. If, if I can get a hold of the guys again, I'm, they may take me out. No, it wasn't at Swan Lake. It was, but it was at Santee. It was at Santee. Um, you remember that? <laughs> yeah, it made national news, I believe. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a bad deal, a bad deal. They actually posted. Uh, it's either Facebook or they posted on social media. I don't know which one they did. But that's that's how it was it was heard about. And um, uh, driver was listening. I stood beside Hoke Outdoors in what. Oh, you were with Hoke, you were with Thomas at Hoke Outdoors in Shields. Well, hey, if you're still there, if you still see him, tell him I said, hey. You're going fishing at Santee next year. Cool. Come go on. Wings are loud when they're flying. We shoot a few on the river. Sea duck hunting is a young man's game. I don't believe I can handle it. Uh, yeah. I, I love what Ty said. This is, I love what Ty said. Uh, my dream hunt would be a limit of big ducks on a couple thousand acres of South Carolina rice field. Yes, sir. That would be the dream hunt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. That would be it. Oh, you didn't talk to him? Okay. Yep, that's what they said. They said they shot snow geese. Oh, man, I'd have shook his hand if I was there, Cody. <clears throat> oh, man. 
Yeah, that's that's if I if I I think you're right, Jan. I think that they they, they thought they had shot snow geese, and uh, but the man was waiting on them at the man was waiting on them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I've been sea duck hunting in Maine, really cool, and the lobster is really cheap up there. <sighs> yeah, I would, that, yeah, that's that's a hunt I'd like to go on. I yeah, I wouldn't say it would be a dream hunt, but um, I've never been, and I'd like to experience it. Ty, I shot my first black duck. And uh, on Santee, where the Green Tree Reservoir is now, back then it was just Hickory Top, but where the Green Tree Reservoir is now, behind it in that in that marsh slough, is where I shot my first black duck. Well, we used to shoot a lot of them right off the Watery River many years ago. They're not there anymore. Oh, you may get one or two here and there, but most of the time you ain't going to see them. <sighs> well, Tina, are you still here or did you leave? Is if you're still here, I just want to thank you for earlier. Uh, yeah, old Mr. Green Jeans don't play. Nope. But I tell you one thing, I was in North Carolina during their teal season and I had them I had two I had three of them. They were laughing their tails off, man. <laughs> they didn't I had to show them how to unload my brownie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they had never seen purple shells. Shoot my 16 gauge. I'd never seen purple shells. Like, what kind of shells are these? They're 16 gauge. Well, who makes them, boss? <laughs> Why don't you have a license? Well, it ain't come in the mail yet. And I still got fucking hunt. Like, here's the email I got. Why don't you have a federal stamp? Man, it hadn't been sent to me yet either. All right, brother. Appreciate you coming in. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up for me. Big Tiny, what's going on? How you doing? Oh, man. Oh, man. But um, I wanted to mention this um, while we got some time until, until I get the next question or whatever pops up. But um, if y'all are looking for some really cool shirts, um, philanthropy, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. A uh, good buddy of mine, uh, he owns that. Out of, he's out of Alabama. Um, you could probably go into one of my, one of my, not one of my short videos, but one of the longer ones, look down in the description down below it and you'll see, you'll have a website that you can go and order some pretty cool t-shirts. Um, I wonder what Mr. Green Jesus says. He probably, he'd probably come by and shake his head and leave. Um, but uh, they, he has some pretty cool T-shirts. Uh, another company that I'm talking to right now is called X Outdoors. Uh, it's spelled A-I-X Outdoors, but pronounced X. Um, it is named after uh, the scientific name for 
wood ducks and mandarin ducks um the wood ducks being um uh, x um something or other i can't remember what it is now good lord I just, my mind just went but anyway it's their scientific name but anyway uh he's got some pretty cool shirts uh hats that kind of stuff also um they got a pair of waders that are they are made in the same manufacturing place that uh, gator waders are made out of. And yes, I am a high and dry waiter guy, but I am looking at a new pair of waders. And um, I may be going to go get a pair of their waders and try them out this year, uh, maybe a little bit later on. But uh, go check them out. Um, I don't have all the websites where I can list them in the in the chat room or whatnot, but um, uh, it's called X Outdoors, A-I-X Outdoors. Um, and the other one, um, and I can't pronounce, Philanthropy. But anyway, it's down in one of my descriptions down below in, in one of my uh, long, long, longer videos. Uh, go ahead and check them out. If you happen to get something from them, let them know, hey, I sent you over there. Uh, again, none of them sponsor me. I don't get nothing free. I don't get nothing extra. I uh, just helping some guys out. So, I tell you, I, uh, Marshall, I'm probably going to have that suit um, with me as Christmas gets closer. You never know. You may see me coming through a swamp <laughs> wearing it. But that was a funny video. I had fun doing that video. That was, that was, um, yes, I have heard of canvas back waders, uh, full body waiter. Matter of fact, um, on Tuesday nights, hi, we usually have a, it's called the Atlantic Flyway Crew. And it's usually hosted by SoFlo Outdoors, S O. F L O outdoors uh, was for Southern Florida outdoors. Uh, we, he's one that used Billy generally hosts that particular uh, um, live stream where you have them on Tuesday nights around eight o'clock and um, you know, uh, which would be tomorrow night. Um, but we were talking about the canvas back waiters um, last week. And I looked them up. I mean, they want a thousand dollars for them, and those things go down from your feet all the way down up to your neck. Um, if you are, if any of y'all know what what's called body booting, um, it's a form of 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 duck hunting. Um, it was very popular years and years and years ago. Not so much now, but. Um, used to be very, very popular. They'd wear wetsuits and uh, get in chest deep water using V boards and putting their shotguns. Uh, they would put their shotguns on, on these V boards um, and shoot ducks and geese. Um, that, that, that full bodied waiter would probably do really, really well for that type of hunting. Um, I am five foot eight and I am very fat and I don't think a full bodied waiter would, um, if I wore something like that, um, I don't know if y'all ever remember that movie Santa Claus with, uh, um, Tim Allen, but when he was coming out and they were playing, uh, ZZ top when he was coming out of the, uh, out of the, out of the, out of the Santa Claus castle. That's what I would look like. That's what I would look like if I wore that thing. But um, I am looking at, like I said, I'm, uh, I, I love my high and dry waders. Uh, but I am looking at another pair and I'm thinking about getting a pair of those from Axe Outdoors or X Outdoors. And, um, they're zippered, they're zippered up waders. Uh, they're made at the same plant that um, that gator waders are made out of. 
and um, you know, I'd like to check them out. Now, I think he only sells them in one camo pattern, and that is old school camo. And for those of y'all that are like me, uh, I'm a pretty much a camo snob. When I'm wearing camo, I like to wear natural gear. Uh, but I really don't care what pattern my waders are, and they could actually be a dark brown for all I care. The reason is, you know, you, if you're in knee-deep water or less, from there to your waist is all the ducks are going to see is you're going to have a coat generally over that. So you just got a little small section that's going to, that, you know, and they're not going to see brown. I mean, they're not going to see it. And it doesn't really matter what camel pattern you got as far as waders go. Yeah, it's, yeah, if you're talking about the canvas back waders, yeah, it's too warm for here. That's the, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Yeah, you take one good walk through the swamp and you'd be stripping out of that thing. <laughs> and there's no way for it to breathe. I mean, there's no way you, you can what you can't take anything off. You know, uh it just wouldn't work here. I don't I it wouldn't work in the south. Um but if you were up north and you were doing what like I said, what you were body booting, um and that was your style of hunting then I would say, yeah, I think it would work. And there's nowhere to strip it down. How are you going to strip it down? You can't take anything off. I mean, you have to zip down and pull it off and tie it around your waist like a coat. Yeah, it'd be too way too hot. <laughs> oh, what else, guys? What else we got? Why don't we just talk some duck hunting stuff? Come on. I like it when we talk ducks. I like anything about duck hunting. I don't care what it is. As long as it's about duck hunting, I love it. Conservation, dogs, guns, shells, calls, waders, boats. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you tell me where y'all like to hunt? What is y'all's um, in your area? What are, what are y'all y'all hunting? Marshes? Open water, ponds, uh, timber, swamps. What is it that y'all hunt the most? What, what is it, the location where y'all like to, where y'all hunt the most? There we go. We'll say it that way. I hunt mostly swamp is where I normally hunt. Uh, as long as it's got some timber in it, some trees, I can hang my stuff up. Get my, I love sitting beside a tree. I love standing beside trees. That's where I like to hunt. <laughs> oh, I bet he did. Yeah, I'll usually wear, um, generally this is how I do it, is I will, uh, I boat in. So I'm going to take my boat, um, nice cypress tree, swamp, okay. I normally boat in. So I will boat all the way to the hole. 
uh, if it's shallow enough, I'll get out of the boat. So when I get there, I get out of the first thing I do before I, when I get out of the, before I even get out of the boat, I take my coat off. I have to wear my coat during the boat ride, take it off, um, get in the water, set out decoys, get, find my tree that I want, um, get all that set up. I've got cameras and stuff that I've got to, to set up and get all that stuff together. Uh, flooded river bottom, oxbows, the thicker, the better. Yes, sir. My kind of hunting. Um, get everything set up. And then I take the boat and usually walk it, um, if possible, uh, 50 to 100 yards. Um, even though I have a blind on the boat uh, during the duck season for the just in case, I always carry extra netting and burlap, and I just kind of drape that stuff over it, just to kind of break the boat up uh, away from us, and I walk back. And by that time, I'm sweating. Um, and I got my coat out there, and I just got it stuck in a tree somewhere. Um, and as it as it starts to – as I start to cool down, and I'll put my, my layers back on. Um, just generally how I do it. That way I don't sweat as much. Swamps early season for woodies and puddle ducks open. Yep. We don't get the divers like we used to on our lakes. Um, Charles, I pretty much, I'm down. At one time I had five dozen diver ducks, decoys. Uh, I am down to two dozen right now. Uh, we just don't have them, and I have them you know, for the just in case hunts. Um, I mean, I had, we had them all. Them gators. I love my gators, man. What are you talking about? Gators ain't going to bother you. They're more scared of you than you're scared of them. Trust me. Oh, every now and then you get one that's curious and wants to know what's going on, but. You give him a good thump, he'll be out of the way. But um, that's generally how I hunt. I, I, I love hunting the timbers and uh, the swamps. Um, I'd prefer to hunt that way. Um, I will tell you now that during early teal season in September, I am hunting in the boat. Uh, because, and, I, and I'm joking with... Uh, with rentals about it, but I will hunt in the boat because of the alligators. Um, I saw one this year that went 15, 16 foot easy. Um, so, uh, yeah, 12 gauge thump. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I hunt in the boat. Now, if it's a warm day, um, and I think that alligators may be out, I may, I may stay in the boat. If the gators eat your ducks, uh, unfortunately, uh, technically, no, but yeah, I got what you're saying. I'll, I'll tell you what, it was, this, it was a, it was a few years ago. Um, I was hunting by myself. It was early September during the or early teal season, rather. And I had, um, a flock of teal come in and I knocked three down and before I could, I was getting ready to get out of the boat to go to go get them, and another flock came in, and I shot two down. So I had five ducks on, you know, down in in the in the decoys. Um. So I was getting out of the boat, and it was shallow. I mean, it was less than knee deep, and I was picking up my last, going to get my last duck. And I looked to my right and here comes an alligator. Um, he was about four, four feet maybe. And um, he was coming after that duck. I mean, he wanted that duck and I had to literally run through the water, my fat butt running through the water to get that duck. I got the duck. And uh, he got close. He got close enough for me to hit him in the head with my shotgun barrel. So, um, yeah, I've had them. I've had them come up, and I've had small ones. You know, maybe you know, 
a foot, foot and a half long, have come to the boat. And um, I have one that was actually trying to climb up the netting because uh, the netting will fall into the water. And I actually have one trying to crawl up on the netting one time. But uh, Snake must be terrified of their more afraid of me than I <laughs> Oh man, it, it's just like I said, he was a little four footer. I mean, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have hurt me. Um, trust me, I'd have, he'd have gotten if he'd have gotten aggressive, I'd have killed him. But um, um I know what you're saying, Marshall. Yeah, they yeah, they do value they do value other critters sometimes over in humans sometimes. I've had snakes drop in the boat before. Um, I've had I've had I've had big black water snakes to full grown cotton mouths drop in the boat before. Um, I had one drop. I was hunting with a buddy of mine, and we were way up in the swamp, and um, one dropped in the boat, and. Uh, my buddy took off. He was at the front of the boat. I was at the back and he ran by me and literally jumped on top of the motor and did a swan dive into the water. Um, I reached down, grabbed the boat paddle and scooped him up and flipped him, out, <laughs> flipped him out of the boat. Yeah, uh, I I have never lost a duck to an alligator, but I know people who have. I I, I do know that. And again, um, if we have a you know we have any decent cold around here, they they go into hibernation. Um, I would have shot the snake. Yeah, I ain't shooting the snake in my boat. I just took the boat paddle and flipped him out. What bothers me more than anything is hitting them red wasp nest. Yeah, you hit one of them, dude, you can't go fast enough. You cannot go fast enough. And I've hit them. I've hit those red wasp nests before. I've had them fall in the boat. It is not a fun time. Those are what bother me. I can handle the snakes. You know, I can, I can handle the gators, but the red wasp, mm -mm. those right there will, uh, -uh nope. Let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, TK and Mike. Man, I ain't thought about them guys in a long time. Going to smell a cock of swamp. Oh, man, I got P Lake. <laughs> yeah, the brown recluse. I'll tell you what'll give you a heart attack, man. If you're not paying attention and you're running the swamp and you're, you're you got your boat going and you're going through some tight creeks and you run into a banana spider nest. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, that big old that big old critter will make you do a dance. Uh, you're going to get the Maxis back tomorrow. Uh, oh, cool. Yo, WW. What if I would have maker? 
Well, look at there, look at there, look at there, Mike. You don't got yourself a, you don't got yourself a snow. You don't got yourself a, oh, look over here, you got yourself a blue goose. Oh, look over here, you got yourself a ring neck. Yeah, buddy. I remember, I think I may still have some VH tapes, Mike, Mike and TK VH tapes. They may be in my collection somewhere. Those guys were hilarious, man. It was it was sad. What was it? Um, it was Mike that was the one that, that died of cancer, wasn't it? it was one of the, one of yeah, I think it was Mike. Those guys were something. I'd never laughed so hard the first time I saw their video. Good lord. Yep. No, what a foul with a maker. My favorite line, though, um, was when they were fishing. And that game warden popped up out of the water. <laughs> he said, let me see fish license. And I promise you, dude, when I first time I saw that, I thought of one game warden that we have here. And I won't mention his name. <laughs> Um, but I, it was that one game war. And I think we all have them in our area. It's just like that. And, uh, me and my buddy were watching that for the first time. And when our game warden came up out of the water, said, let me see fishing license. We thought of that one game warden. Oh, what do we got going on? Mark J. Larson, what's going on, brother? How you been? You getting ready for the trapping season, brother? I, you know, the spiders don't bother me that much, but I mean, when you're at night and you go through one of them, one of them big spider webs, and it catches you in the face. And that daggum big yellow and black banana spider is crawling all over the place. Yeah, that'll get you willies. <laughs> Rising Creek. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, and he poured that hot coffee down that, that single barrel shotgun. I about lost it. I about lost it, dude. I, I think I spit, I think I spit either, I was probably drinking Pepsi Cola or Sweet Tea. And I'm telling you, it went all over the place. It can't shot out my nose. I laugh so hard. You think you're about ready now? Okay. You got all your dirt waxed up. Cool beans. Go and get them, man. I'm hoping you break the record this year. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm assuming you're talking about the game warden on the on the show. You're gonna have to watch him again tomorrow. <laughs> Can you find them on YouTube? Are they on YouTube? I I just haven't I haven't looked for them. I may have to go watch them again myself. Cool. I think the he's speaking of game wardens, the funniest game warden story I have. I have two, but the funniest one is um wait a minute now, what? Maybe not duck related, but what about the king and snow crabs missing 
and their season cancel changes are happening faster. Uh, I don't know, Jerry. I have no clue. I didn't know that they didn't under, didn't get it. What's up, Daniel? You been in the hiding in the background? Living MN predicts 37 coyotes this year. Uh, well, I was actually thinking 40, brother. I was actually thinking 40. So mark that down. I'm saying 40. Go to blind snacks. <laughs> you just popped in? Okay. Um, my favorite game award story is I was maybe 13, 14 years old. And um, my dad took me down to the swamp. He, he didn't want to hunt for whatever reason. Uh, so I just, he took me down and dropped me off. And I went wading, wading through the swamp, uh, across a couple ridges. Uh, this is all wading. There was no boats. Uh, waded across couple ridges, um, got a little flat, uh, and started shooting ducks. Well, a little while later, uh, I heard a voice behind me and there's a guy and he, he's yelling out, um, for me to come over to him. And, you know, I didn't know who he was. Um, he goes, uh, you need to come over here. I said, I don't know who you are. I ain't going over there. He said, well, I'm a game warden. I said, well, you ain't wearing a uniform. I don't know who you are. And uh, he asked me if I had a hunting license. I said, no, I ain't got no hunting license. And he asked me if I had a plug in the gun. I said, no, I ain't got a plug in the gun. Well, he got all mad and stuff, and he come wading across that water, and the only thing that man was wearing was a pair of hip boots. And as he got closer, I saw, that's when I saw the badge that he had. Still wasn't in the uniform. They didn't wear uniforms that much back then. But um, he came around and wanted to see my hunt license. I said, man, I'm 13 years old. I don't have a hunt license. And he said, Where's your, let me see your gun. I'll check the plug in your gun. And I said, I don't have a plug in the gun. I'm shooting a side by side. And uh, anyway, he got he asked me who I was. Of course, I told him. He said, asked me, is your daddy so-and-so? I said, yeah. And he says, you follow me. That man made me pack up all my stuff, drag it back across the swamp, get in his car, and drive me all the way to town down and drop me off at the house and told my dad uh, <laughs> what I had said to him. And my dad said, well, was he wrong? He goes, no. He goes, well, <laughs> what are you doing? So there's, there's my one game warden story. Uh, let's see. Money's kind of busy around the house. I hope to prove you both. Are. Hey, Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm in your corner, man. 40. Uh, yeah, I have, I think I got VHS tapes, uh, of, of those guys. <sighs> Go to blind snacks. What do you, uh, what do you want to know? Uh, we usually, during the regular duck season, we cook. Um, I cook, uh, biscuits and, uh, usually sausage biscuits or something like that. Um, it's usually what I do during the during the early season, like early teal. I'm not going to cook a breakfast. It's just too hot. I'm not going to cook. Uh, I'll bring snacks, crackers, honey buns, things like that. Lots of Gatorade, a lot of Diet Mountain Dew, and usually have a jug of sweet tea somewhere close. Um. But I usually have if if I'm if I'm if I have snacks in my bag, it's usually going to be crackers, you know, nabs, um, maybe a honey bun, pecan twirls. Look, my crack, my crack cocaine is apple pies, those little fried apple pies. Love them things to death. I can't get enough of them. The only ones that I like are, are the ones that come out of Dollar General. And they usually don't have them. So when I do see that they have them, I buy the case.
I need to make another blind breakfast video with the old biscuit maker. I am. I am, brother. Uh, this Hopefully this weekend. Hopefully this weekend, dude. Um, I got a lot of video ideas this weekend. Um, things that I'm going to be doing. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be making breakfast. Breakfast while we're hunting. Uh, now, we're going to be camping, so... Um, the only place, Jan, I have ever seen them is on eBay. It's the only place I've ever seen them. Um, now, you can buy the newer ones. Um, Jan, do me a favor. Shoot me an email with your phone number. I'll give you a call. I know somebody who just bought one. It's not the old style like I have, but it's a, it's a newer style. And I'll find out where he uh, got them from. So if you'll shoot me an email with your phone number, uh, I'll call you tomorrow. I'll, I'll let you know. Subway subs, cold pizza, and diet sundrop. What would I look under? Uh, just go to any. Just go to my homepage and go under um, my about page. Just go to my homepage and on YouTube. Go to where it says about. Click that. Look down. You'll see my email address. That is Daddy Duck three sixty five at Gmail. So, and shoot me your phone number, and I will. Uh, I'll find out tomorrow where he get got his, and um, I'll let you know. But it, but like I said, it's a newer style. Mine's mine was made in the forties, if not earlier. Whoa, pontoon Jody, what's happening? I love that when you sing that to me. It just tickles me to death. How you been? You catching any good fish lately? Guys, you want to see somebody who can catch some catfish, go to Pontoon Jody Catfishing on YouTube. I'm telling you now. That old gal can catch a fish. If you want to see critters being caught, you go over to Mark J. Larson's. He'll catch a critter. The Waffle House is a half mile from the boat ramp, which makes it. Who said that? I got to go back up there. Oh, Marshall. Okay. Yeah, there's no uh the Hoosier outdoorsman. How you doing? Welcome in. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. Um generally where I hunt, there are no stores close. <laughs> so we 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 take in food. Um I normally during the regular season, uh I'm cooking like I said, uh, biscuits. Uh, appreciate that, Mark. I'm cooking biscuits, um, sausage patties. Uh, sometimes I'll do eggs. Uh, all depends on how many people I have. If it's me and maybe one other guy, if, if I'm by myself, I'm not cooking. But if it's, if it's two or three of us, I'll cook sausage biscuits. If it's more than that, then I'll add in some eggs and stuff like that. Um, now we're this weekend, we're going to be camping. So there'll be a lot of that, a lot of cooking going on. What is on my lanyard this year? Oh, all of that. <laughs> Let's see here. Well, we'll start from uh, right to left. Uh, duck commander gadwall call. Duck Commander Wood Duck Call. Uh, as far as mallards go, I have two uh, Kirk McCulloch uh, cut down calls. Then I have a Big Lake, uh, Big Lake Outdoors, uh, J Frame, Arkansas style uh, duck call. And then I have a uh, 
the Waterfowl Company, uh, made by Daryl Newman, uh, this J frame uh, duck call right here. And then uh, over here, um, always have a teal call because I never know. And then I have a the, the whole six and one whistle. Both of these are made by Duck Commander. But um, that's what's on my lanyard this year. Right there. If I go through the swamp, high rate of speed, wearing this thing, and I hit a tree branch, y'all will find me hanging. Did I get a call from Joy? Yes. Yes, right here. Uh, Tecton. Yes, I did, right there. There it is, right there. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, guy, uh, one, of, one of the guys in chat asked me what who I thought were the best call makers. Joey was one of them. Uh, Hugh McLaren from... Um, uh, Big Lake Outdoors, Daryl Newman, Waterfowl Company, uh, Wes Looney from um, Ground SWAT call, game calls. Um, I do not have one from Wes as of yet, but I'll, I am planning to get one. But yes, I have his call right here. I'll be running this a little bit this year, cut down call. I love his calls, man. Um, I, I love cut down calls. Uh, I hunt a lot of timber, so and a lot of swamps. Uh, like I said, right now I got two Kurt McCulloch calls on here. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, he's an excellent call maker, um, and I mean, in, in my opinion, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I've personally not met anyone who wasn't a good call maker, if, if that makes sense. Um, but Joy does, he, he's a great call maker. He has a lot of great calls. Um, when I, I was in the market, when I bought this call from him, um, I saw him at the, uh, one of the, one of the festivals that we have. I uh, bought the call, and then uh, I did a video on him. So, I, I, you know, I got with him, and I said, hey, I'd like to do a video with you. And he said, yeah. So I drove down there, um, got a got a video uh, done um, on him. Um, great guy, a lot of knowledge. Um, and, you know, he, he turns out a great call. Turns out a really great call. Uh, Daryl Newman has a great call. Um, the open uh, Big Lake, Big Lake Outdoors. Uh, for a J for a double read J frame call, um, I can make that thing bark. I mean, it is is unbelievable. Um, uh, I can I can do some wild things on his J frame. Um, I have just had not had the opportunity to run. Um, uh, well, thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, I, I just haven't had the opportunity to run anything as far as joy is concerned to run anything, but his cut down. Um, I would love, I, I, man, I wish I could buy two or three of from everybody and just have them and run them. And, but you know, you got to pick what you like and you know, all right, Charles, man, I appreciate you coming in, brother. Thank you so much. The Bullock Experience is here now. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, and like I said, Hoosier, I appreciate you saying that, man. That, that makes me feel a lot better. Uh, I just wish the, I would just wish everybody else would watch it. Um, you know, I wish everybody would sit there and watch that video. So get more views. <laughs> that's That's my biggest issue right now is getting views. All right, Charles, give me a holler, man. If you're still here, give me a holler, man. You know how to get in touch with me. Get a holler with me and uh, let's plan something.
But uh, going back to duck calls, um, I have run a lot of duck calls. Uh, I have, you can't see them from here, but I got a little little thing over here. It's probably got 40 or 50 calls on it. And um, uh, I would be, I would be very interested, Hoosier. Um, go to my about page and um, you can... Uh, Go to my about page, get my email address. It's it's very simple. It's daddyduck365 at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a phone number. Uh, I will get back in touch with you. And sure, I'd love to do a podcast with you. And I, if you want to come up on here one day, um, I, every Monday night um, at 8 o'clock is when I start my live streams. Maybe we can get together and and and, and kind of share notes and get you up, get you up, up here live. Email sent with number great. Do I ever do a live premiere of your videos? I've done like one. Oh, a live premiere uh, where I'm actually duck hunting. Is that what you're asking? Is that what you're asking, Jody? Do I ever do lives while I'm duck hunting? Is that is that the question? Because if so, if that is the question, then no. Um, generally the reason is, um, well, several reasons, but the main reason is where I hunt, I have no service. I have no service whatsoever. Um, the next reason is, is I am trying to, uh, no, oh, oh, doing a live or doing a premiere. Um, yeah, I've done one. I think I've done one premiere, maybe two. Um, maybe one or two. Um, I, you know, maybe y'all think differently than I do, but, um, <laughs> I never know if it's interesting enough to do a premiere, to be quite honest. Um, I think premieres should be a little bit more interesting than a regular video and, um, maybe y'all may find it different. I don't know. Um, tell me, y'all let me know. Uh, give me an idea. Give me an idea, Jody. What would you like to see as a live premiere? Um, you know, my, my, my biggest thing is, uh, I do a live stream from here and, you know, I, I'd never do live stream from, from while I'm hunting. Cause, uh, number one, I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing as far as hunting. And, and you have a tendency of going back and forth, looking at the screen to find out what people are saying. Um, that's number one. Number two, I generally don't have the, I, I don't have any service. Do a premiere of your next video. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going hunting this weekend, so you may get a, um, I may do that. I haven't done a vi I haven't done a video in almost a month. Uh, yes, Daniel, I have. Um, yep. Now he just put one out here recently about the shot string. I have not watched that one. Um, to be honest, like I told some guys earlier, uh, I've just been so busy at work. I have not had time to watch YouTube. I had not even had time to do a video. Um, it has been, I've been that busy at work and, um, the time I get off from work, get home, uh, I have homework to do, you know, um, uh, as far as my job is concerned, it usually takes me about 30 minutes. I, I eat supper and I am in bed and I'm up and gone again at two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. So I'm, I just haven't had time to do anything. And that, I have not watched his last video, and I want to. It's on my list. And then if I do have a day off where I'm not doing anything, uh, I have chores to do. <laughs> so, um, 
but I, yeah, Joel puts out a great, great video. Uh, but you know, he, he's, he's been doing it for so long, um, as a video a videographer, you know, um, his stuff is really well made. Um, I've talked to Joel on the phone, uh, numerous times. Um, me and him pretty much think alike when it comes to duck hunting, um, uh, and, and about life in general. Um, I've told him this on his videos. I've put it in comments. I've told this to him over the phone. And the one time that I met him, uh, in person, I told him right into his face. Um, he is, he is the, he is the YouTuber that I want to emulate more than anybody else. I, if, if I could have his, um, his knowledge of how to put together and edit, um, videos, I think, yeah, he'd be the guy. He's the guy that I look at. I look at his videos, not only for, to, to gain knowledge and the entertainment. I also gain, I look at him to see how he's editing. Does that make sense? I hope so. <clears throat> <clears throat> you understand? Maybe the last few weekends with the wife or a girl's night before the season starts. I hear you. Yeah, I think he's a great he's a great man. Um, I, I bumped into him last year uh, by accident in a. Um, at a festival here in South Carolina. And uh, the, for those who are from South Carolina, it was a seaweed festival. And I was dumbfounded. I, I I have never been, ever been a person to be, to have a lack of words. I've always been able to talk to anybody. And I was just, I was starstruck, dude. I'm 57 years old. And that man, I was starstruck. Um, great guy. Great guy. We talked, um, you know, had a great time talking. Um, I finally had to leave because uh, he had a lot of people that were coming up to him, wanting, you know, to talk to him as well. And I just, you know, didn't want to take up their time. Um, but he's a great guy. Great guy. Uh, I think, uh, oh, Jody, you're leaving me. All right. You have a good evening. Um, I would love to hunt with him. If, 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 you know, we were talking, um, if we were, we were talking earlier about, you know, uh, bucket list hunts, um, I've hunted with some pretty big names, um, over my 50 years of duck hunting and Joel Strickland is one that I would love to duck hunt with. Um, I, I would love to j just, just share a blind with him and just talk and, and, and shoot ducks and, and whether we shot limits or not does not really matter what kind of ducks we shoot does not really matter but sharing a blind with him just talking to him um i would love love to do that that the big delta x one that's cool man that is so cool um you know i've hunted with you know i've hunted with phil robinson and jace and, and those guys, um, and they're great, great people. And I had, I really enjoyed that hunting. Is yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, at, at one time, uh, and I'll and I'll, I'll say this out loud. I, t I even told him. I sent him a message one time. I said, "You need to quit doing videos because each time you put a video out, I'm in the middle of doing the exact same video." And I kid you not, dude. We 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 ran over each other for for about a month on videos one time. We he would do one, and it was I was I was literally doing this not well not exactly the same, but the same subject, the same subject matter. And then I would do one, and then he did the same thing. He said, "Dude, I was fixing to put this video out. The same thing you just put out." I was like, "Dude, that's crazy." Um. He's a good fellow. I'd, I'd love to share a blind with him. Um, like I said, I've hunted with Phil Robinson and those guys, and, and they're great people. Um, another person I would love to hunt with and just to share a blind uh, would probably be Jimbo. Um, 
uh, Ronquist uh, from r and um, I would love to share a blind with him just one time, uh, just talking ducks and, and just having a great time. You know, um, he's one of the guys I'd love to hunt with. Uh, you know, Butch Rickenbach would have probably been another one. Unfortunately, he passed away, but um, I'd love to sit down. I would have loved to sit and talk with him. Um, I can remember something about mine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Jan. Yeah. Um, you thought for sure you were going to say me. Mark, I'd like to hunt with you one time. I, I, actually, I tell you what, Mark, you're the kind of guy I would love to come and trap with you. Is what I And I don't know anything about trapping. But I think you could teach me how to trap. I'd love to run a season with you running trap lines. Yep. Or have you come here and run trap around here? I mean, seriously, uh, I just think you would, uh, of course our, our, our fur won't be as, as beautiful as yours because we're in the South, but yeah. All right, Reynolds, you have a good one. Appreciate you coming in. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. Hyatt Outdoors, appreciate you coming in, buddy. Uh, yeah, man. <coughs> Get with me, buddy. We'll try to we'll try to put something together. We'll try to we, let's try to put something together, Hyatt. Give me a holler, Reynolds. Get with me, buddy. If you're still here, shoot me a, shoot me a text tomorrow. Yeah, I have again. I haven't seen it. Um, I have not seen the the video yet, Daniel. Um, but I'm gonna say this, and I'll say it out loud. Ever since I started shooting boss ammo, I have I have not worried about extended choke tubes. Uh, I have gone back. I, I'm going back to to, you know, the factory tubes. Y'all know I shoot a 16 gauge. Uh, it is a fixed full choke Belgian Browning 16. There is no choke tubes. And I mean, I, I kill ducks. I kill doves. You know, it, I, and I'm, as far as I'm going to, uh, 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 and with the, with the boss ammo that I'm shooting now, the number fives and the number sevens for the 16 gauge, dude, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even considering going back to extended choke tubes. He might want to start adjusting your bedtime for nine or his old timer. Um, I think I'd have to start at seven, dude. And I'm usually eating supper at seven. I tried to do this for two hours. We've been gone two hours and 13 minutes. Um, usually I cut it off at, at the 10 o'clock mark. Um, I understand people got to go to bed. I'm, I'm fixing to call this in a little bit, but, um, but give me a holler, buddy. Seriously. Give me a holler. Uh, who's your says, Ooh, the 16 gauge Brian. And I bet that's sweet. Oh, dude, you have no clue. Um, I love that gun. I am. I got two big purchases I want to get and I'm going to try to get it before the year's out or maybe for next season. But, um, number one, I got to get a new dog. Uh, my old dog passed away. Um, I'm looking at getting a poodle, a standard hunting poodle. And, uh, hold on. Uh, I have an old 12 gauge wingmaster, a 30 inch, Full, I would get it out a little bit. I, I'm not sure exactly what you're saying, Daniel. Um, you have an old 12 gauge wingmaster or a 30 inch full 
you want to shoot bismuth out of it or I would like I would like to get I would like to get Yeah, I would um I, I'd try it, Daniel. Get you a box of get you a box of boss of uh, and 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 pattern it, man. Seriously. Here we go again with a poodle. You dang on right, Jen. I want a poodle. I want a poodle. But uh I also want a poodle and <clears throat> I want to buy um the new uh Browning Sweet 16 uh in the Wicked Wings edition is what I want. You'd like to try bismuth. Daniel, um I I would man. I I'll get you get you some um get you some two and three order you a box of two and three quarter number fives and pattern and see what it does. Um I think you will be surprised. At 35 yards, I think you'll be surprised. It even had the hairstyle and everything. I don't know if I would uh, floof it up, uh, Hoosier, but um, it would definitely have a, a, a it'd have a close haircut. Um, I'm not going to floof flu it up. What's up, Billy? Billy, uh, while I got you here and I got a handful of people here, are we, are we on for tomorrow night? And whose channel are we doing this on and what time? Uh, I got to get a new bolt for it. I think my firing pin broke. I tell you what, uh, Daniel, run it up to uh, Darlington Gunworks and tell Josh I sent you and see what he can do with it. All right. Serious. Take it up there to Darlington Gunworks. Uh, ask for Josh. If he's in there, um, tell him I sent you and, um, and uh, he'll take a look at it. I uh, just woke up. I can't do it. I have a night job tomorrow. All right. Um. So you'll be working tomorrow night, so you couldn't even come on if I put it on, right? Is that correct? So what I'll do is I will... I'll, I will send out everybody a text tomorrow and see who's 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 wanting to come up. If nobody wants to do anything, then I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to do it. I don't want to be the only one up there. <clears throat> you are correct. Sir. Okay. Because tomorrow is Taco Tuesday for for Josh, so I don't know what what he what he wants to do. But I'll send a text out sometime. No, no, uh, nope, nope. I just remembered, dude. I'm working late tomorrow too, so I ain't gonna be able to do it. I just remembered that. I'll be working late tomorrow, so I will not be able to do it. Well, holy crap. If it ain't a Jeremy Albritton. What's going on, Bubba? While you're at it, Jeremy, push some more buttons. I'm fixing the call in here in a little bit. I shoot business out of my Frenchie now. My Franky. Uh, now I love it, but I pick and choose when I shoot it. Uh, you're still living. I, that's a good. Uh, that's a good thing, Jeremy. Daniel, that's all I shoot now. When it comes to ducks, that's all I'm shooting right now. Is, is strict bismuth, and and by boss. Um, I have a box of heavy bismuth number fours, and they'll probably <laughs> they'll. <laughs> I doubt very seriously I'll even shoot that. Ah, Jeremy, you did it. <laughs> Guys, if you don't have Jeremy Albritton's 
YouTube, you need to get it. If you're into fishing and tying jigs, um, do me a, do yourself a huge favor. Look up Jeremy Albritton and uh, check out his videos. You miss too much to shoot it all the time. <laughs> Man, I, I'm going to tell you. Um, uh, yeah, I love it, dude. It, it, <laughs> don't get that, Jeremy. That he's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I love that stuff, Jan. I'm, I'm telling you straight up, man. That is That has taken me. I mean, where I was shooting my 12 gauge all the time, um, I was only shooting my 20 gauges during the early teal season or maybe early, early season when I was shooting nothing but wood ducks and carrying a 12 gauge. Um, and, and I never could shoot my 16 gauges. I got two 16 gauges. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't shoot them. You know, they're older guns and, you know, I didn't want to be putting steel through them. And when I finally converted over to boss and man, picking up those light guns again and, 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 and that 16 gauge, Oh, it is. It's been a blessing, man. It's just been a blessing and it hit. Yeah, it does. It hit, it hits hard. The last video I did, um, uh, uh, but stopped by the retail store told me they were down to earth people. I bet they are. I bet they're just down straight up down to earth. Last one of the last videos I did, I was uh, in North Carolina shooting. We were hunting geese that afternoon and the geese were not flying. And I ended up shooting doves with number seven boss ammo. All right. I only had two boxes. Of, 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 of shells and I was hitting doves and dude, I, I was, I was feeling really feeling sorry for the doves. I mean, I hit one so hard. Um, I mean, I pulverized him. I mean, I don't think you could have gumboed that dove. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, everything was just broke up in that bird. I want to get a good 20 or 28 gauge to hunt ducks with. Yeah. I know a lot of guys that do it, man. Um, get, get you some boss, get you some boss ammo. Uh, I wish somebody would boss from boss would just watch your videos of mine or, or come to my live stream just so I, they know that how much I love the stuff. Hey, welcome back, Tina. I need a four gauge with double off buck and a four and a half inch. What's up, Jeff? Oh yeah. They are hard hitting, but I'm going to tell you, I shoot the fives and the sevens. Um, I don't hunt geese, you know, and if I do, it's, it's, it's an opportunity kind of thing. Um, so I don't, I don't have any, I mean, I do have some number four and a heavy bismuth, from heavy shot and I am carrying it with me on this trip just in case we do get into some geese I have a little bit bigger bigger pellet but I honestly don't think I need them I think the number fives would do just fine But yeah, I, I uh, boss ammo, yeah. And uh, I don't know if I said this on the last live stream or not, but uh, I know there's a couple people in here that like um, the the flex float decoys. You got the twenty gauge boss shells for your wife. She's never shot ducks before, and she wants to go this year. Well, you're starting her off right by getting boss. But um, I know that I think there's a couple guys in here other than myself that like the um, 
that like the flex float the made by heyday now they were called lifetime now they're at heyday um they have come out with diver ducks dude they got and they right i still have yet to find them on their website but they are selling them in rogers sporting goods um there's a they they sell it as a pack of 12 um eight bluebill drakes and four redhead drakes but they're the flex float um and they just come out with a, a goose uh with a flocked head for those of y'all who haven't seen it yet um i really want to get those divers so i, I want to sell i want to sell the divers that i have now the plastics that i have now get rid of them and um buy me a dozen or two of those flex floats. They will be awesome. Yeah, you know, fives will kill geese. Yeah. I, I don't doubt. It. I think fives are plenty. Especially when it comes to boss. I hear the heydays fade, do they? Jeff, they have not faded for me. Um now I will say this. Um there, I have, I had somebody comment a while back on one of my videos. I do not know, remember who they were, but they said that theirs faded. But they also said that they put out a lot of decoys and they leave their decoys out all year long. They have private property. They put their decoys out and they don't pull them back up. Um, honestly, keeping decoys out that long, something's going to fade. Something's going to happen. Um, I don't, I, but none of mine have faded. None, not one. So, um, I mean, I think if you left them out all year long, yeah, they're going to fade. But if you're picking them up every day, if you're a, 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 I shouldn't say a normal hunter, but, um, you know, if you're, if you're hunting two or three times a week, you're picking your decoys up, you're taking them home. Uh, I hang mine inside of a shed. You know, they're not left out in the weather. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think they'll fade, but I've had, I've had plastics, different brands of plastics that have faded before. Uh, leaving them out all year long. So, um, okay, hold on. Jan Phillips says, picked up a couple boxes, three or fives. We'll give you a report. Good to go. Daniel says, I'm looking for a good puddle duck pack of decoys to get some variety in the spread. Any suggestions? Um, Daniel, it's, um, How do I put this? I like the heyday decoys, the flex look. They are expensive. No if and buts about it. They are expensive. But that's what I like. Now, with that said, um, I think decoys are made for the hunter and not for the duck. Is, listen, I've shot ducks over black milk jugs. So, and they don't look nothing like a duck. So with that said, um, you know, if you want to pick up, you know, I think Avery has a puddler pack. Um, you know, there's some other companies that may have a puddler pack. You know, pick them up. You know, they're cheaper. They're cheaper decoys or plastics. Uh, if you shoot them, they're going to sink. If you step on them, they're going to break. Um Heyday decoys, you can step on them, shoot them. They're not going to break. They're not going to stink. I need some 12-gauge, three-and-a-half-inch bucks. I need to go place to order some. I have no clue, Jeremy. Jeff Bear says they all fade over time. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think, it, but it would take a long time for mine to, mine to fade. I take care of them. You know, now when I'm hunting, they get stepped on. They get, Sometimes they get shot. Um... But when the season's over, 
you know, I wash them. I wash all my decoys. I clean them up. I hang them up and they're ready for next year. What we'll fly away you hunting? I'm in the Atlantic, if you're asking me. Jeremy, I ain't bought buckshot in so long. I don't even know where to go get it anymore. I still have six boxes of buckshot from 10 years ago, probably. <clears throat> You can't find none around here. I have not looked for buckshot. Mm. All righty. We got nine people in the house. I have been on here for two and a half hours. Daniel, who asked what to add to his spread? Well, Hoosier, I appreciate that, man. Daggum, man, I appreciate that. You have no clue to how much I appreciate that. Yeah, Daniel, I, I, I tell you what, you know, I'm, you know, I, I've got five dozen heyday decoys. And so I, I and here's here's my spread. I have two dozen matter decoys, a half a dozen blacks, a half a dozen pintails, a half a dozen widgeon, uh, a half a dozen green wings, and a dozen blue wings. Um, I only use my blue wings during teal season. <coughs> That's the only time I use them. Now, I'll use my green wings throughout the year. Um, I will carry everything with me. I may or may not put out everything when I go. I may get to a spot, um, and it may be a B, you know, plan B or plan C or sometimes plan D or F, and uh, I can't use all my decoys. So I'll put out what I think I need at the time, but I'm going to have them. Um there's always going to be mallards in there. There's always going to be blacks. If I'm in the timber, I don't necessarily put out pintails. I don't necessarily put out widgeon, but I got them if I need them. Does that make sense? Um, oh, you were asking Daniel where, what flyaway he was in. Okay. Yeah, he's in the Atlantic flyaway. Tina so wants to go hunting. Tina, I'd like to take you hunting. But you're in Texas. I guess I could, we could drive to Texas and go hunting. Do you ever do duck call reviews? Yes, I do. Um, yes, I have done them. Um, I've I've done for for Joey. Uh, I reviewed his calls. Um uh, Big Lake Outdoors, I've done um, uh, Duck Commander. Um, I've done uh, the Waterfowl Company reviews. Um, am I picking you up? Yeah, I'll come get you, Jeremy. Um, but, yeah. Yep, I sure do. Uh, I, actually, I love doing them. That's one of my one of my favorite videos. My favorite off season videos is doing duck call reviews. Um, I've uh, if you'll go, I tell you what, if you'll go and look, um, I did a video. One of my favorite videos that I've ever put out. One of my best viewed videos I've ever put out. Um, I took the RNT uh, Mondo versus the Kirk McCulloch cutdowns. Um, and I had this whole big production. 
and it's um uh, it's the Mondo versus the Kurt McCulloch uh, video. Um, it's, I did that a while back. Uh, it's one of my best best watched videos. Um, go take a look at it. Um, I, I love doing that. That was that was my one of my favorite off season hunting uh, off season videos that I've done. Um, and I do a lot of cooking videos as well. So. Yeah. I, yeah. That was, um, I did a comparison video, uh, and those uh, compared to two duck calls. Um, I've done, uh, uh, wood duck calls. Now I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't believe in a wood duck call. Um, I do. I, I believe very heavily in these things. These, these, act, these work. Um, and I did a, a comparison video with the, this wood duck call here versus the, uh, uh, big lake wood duck call the perfect, what they call the perfect Woody. Um, I, I, and Hugh McLaurin is a great friend of mine, lives less than an hour away from me. We talk all the time. Um, and he's got a great little call. The my biggest problem, and I've and he knows this, it's nothing, nothing new, nothing. I'm nothing, I'm not hiding anything, is it takes very little air to blow his call. And I have a lot of air. Okay. I have a lot of air. And this the duck commander wood duck call uh fits my air perfect um you know so you know uh i love this little call and i use it a lot I've had wood ducks decoy. I have turned ducks, uh, wood ducks in. Um, I've called them, called them in the decoys flying. I have called them uh, while they were swimming, and they swam in the decoys. So these little calls work. I don't care what anybody says; they work. I know a lot of people sit there and say, "No, they don't. They just they just wanted to be there." And it's the same thing with any duck. You call a duck. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And it's, they want to be there. So. But yeah, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of comparison calls. I like doing them. Yes, y'all got a really good cold front coming down. Y'all, I think y'all gonna see some really good hunting on in Indiana. But, uh, but yeah, dude, I love to do them. Man, I'm getting tired. I'm having to really dig in to see the video, uh, see the chat now. But I'm hoping um, I'm hoping this year be a better year for me killing ducks and getting it on film than it was the last two years. Because uh, last two years have just been terrible. Yo, Anti, what's happening? I ain't calling a duck a duck. If it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, nine times out of ten, it's a duck. There you go, Mark. Y'all got snow already. Yeah, really. You're, you and me both. I, I, I want to get back out west and shoot ducks. Ain't that the truth, Jeremy? We get snow down here in the south and we freak out. We go buy milk and bread and hunker down. Good Lord, if we get a quarter inch of ice on the on the ground. 
Tina, you leaving again? All right, Tina, take care. Last time I hunted in the snow was two years ago during April during a turkey hunt in Kentucky. Oh, you're not gone yet. Oh, oh, okay. I, th I thought you were leaving. I thought Mark said you were leaving. Oh, man. I am getting, yeah, I'm starting to wear down a little bit, y'all. <laughs> and how where you come up with these things? You crack me up sometimes, bro. Uh, you crack me up, brother. All right, guys. I've been on here for two hours and 42 minutes. I am getting tired. I have got to go to bed. I do have to work tomorrow. And it's going to be a late day. But uh, I want to thank each and every one of y'all coming in. I really do. Y'all Y'all have... Uh, I was... I'll tell, I'll be honest with you. I, I tonight was. I didn't even want to be here tonight. Uh, I mean, I struggled, um, and I finally said, "All right, I'm coming up. I'm going to do this." And y'all have changed my mind. I mean, seriously, y'all y'all been a great great crowd tonight. Um, a lot of good questions. Uh, a lot of good things have been said tonight. Y'all have y'all have re-energized me a little bit, and uh, for that, I want to thank you. But um, I am going to call it a night. Again, thank each and every one of y'all coming in. Um, hopefully this weekend will be a good duck hunting weekend. I'll get some good footage, hopefully, this weekend. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, but, you know, um, if you haven't, if you're new to this channel, you know, go back and watch some of my old videos. Share them out. Uh, whatever you need to do. You know, help, help me out a little bit. I really would appreciate it. But until the next time, we will see y'all next time on Daddy Duck 365. Y'all have a good night. Stay blessed. Stay safe.